and greetings. Welcome to Basic English Communication Course for Non-Academic Staff for GST Series 3, 2021. My name is Hani Suraya Binti Aziz. For this edition of the course, we are going to discuss further about how can you actually converse with confidence. Previously, we have looked at several topics. For example, what are the limitations in communication? How to use the correct tone and pitch when you are talking? And how can you overcome your stage fright? For this edition, we're going to talk about different units or different stages of conversation, how you start, how do you handle and maintain, and how do you close a conversation, as well as on how you can handle being on the telephone. So let's start. Right, in any basic unit of a conversation, there is an exchange which involves two moves, an initiating move or what we call as the starting move, as well as a response. In any conversation, you would have two parties, the speaker and the listener. The speaker will actually send a message to the listener. The listener is supposed to listen and therefore provide a response or a reply. This is what makes any conversation a two-way communication because there is a reply as well as feedback. Whenever there is a feedback, okay, you must make sure that you maintain the conversation and then you close it properly. And conversation making usually involves the stages of starting a conversation, maintaining it, and finally closing the conversation. In this stage or in this edition, we will learn about how we can start, maintain, and close a conversation and the language we can use to convey our intended meaning in conversation making. So let's go to the first stage, which is starting conversation, which some people would think that it is the hardest or the most difficult stage in actually the process of conversation itself, because some of us find it a uh, challenging, okay, a challenging, uh, what we can call a challenge or a difficulty whenever we want to start a conversation, because sometimes we are nervous, we don't know how to approach the other party and starting a conversation. So it is important to choose the appropriate way to start a conversation whereby we have an opening move and whatever we say, okay, whatever uh, the first line or our first sentence will affect how the rest of the conversation goes. So the following are a few ways that you can start a conversation. We have three ways here. Number one, using greetings and introduction. Number two, talking about your surroundings. And number three, making small talks. So let's have a look at them one by one. So using greetings and introduction. So these are among the common greetings that you guys can use whenever you want to introduce yourself or whenever you want to start a conversation. It is just as simple as saying hello, good morning, good afternoon, or good day, depending on the time of the day, whenever you are approaching someone to start a conversation. You can say or you can ask them questions. For example, how are you? How do you do? So whenever you ask a question, of course, you are going to be waiting for a feedback or a reply in which, of course, you have already uh, on the process of trying to maintain the conversation. Right. Any greetings that you have are usually followed by introductions, which normally would include disclosing of some personal information of yourself. So normally, especially when we are meeting someone for the first time, they don't know who we are, what do we do, where we are from. So it is appropriate for us to disclose some personal information by introducing our name, where we are from, as well as what do we do, for example, our occupation. Okay, so these are, these are the basic. Okay, and following that, we may include other relevant information. For example, okay, these are among the samples or we can say example of statements or greetings that are followed by introduction. How do you do? I'm Zahra from Academic Division. Pleased to meet you. 
my name is Arif and you are, which of course would require feedback from the listener. Good afternoon. You look familiar. Haven't we met before? Okay, so asking a question, of course, would require feedback, meaning that, of course, you are trying to start as well as maintain the conversation. Number two, talking about your surroundings. Now, topics on the surroundings to start a conversation should relate to the context of your conversation. Why do you approach the person in the first place? Is there like a certain intention that you're trying to uh, provide or they're trying you trying to uh, give to the other person? You, you can talk about everything, but make sure that it is about your surroundings. For example, the noise level, the weather, and the furnishing of the room, wherever you are currently at. So these are some of the questions that you may actually ask. Is it, it is noisy in here, isn't it? Today is rather hot, isn't it? This office isn't large, is it? The manager has replaced the furniture, hasn't he? Right, another way that you guys can actually start a conversation by making small talk. Now, small talk is casual and light discussion of everyday topics such as your work, the weather, and current affairs. And the following are some examples. Again, they are in question form to encourage feedback from the other person or, or from the other party so that they are able to give feedback. Therefore, you will actually be in the stage of maintaining a conversation. For example, was the traffic heavy on the way to work? When is our department meeting? Did you watch the news last night? So these are among samples of questions that you can ask to the other party to make sure that there is feedback. And then you are encouraging small talk just to get the conversation started. Now we move on to the next stage, which is maintaining a conversation. Now, once a conversation has been started, both speakers should try to develop and maintain it. Okay, and there are several ways that you guys can do to maintain a conversation, which would include highlighting what we have heard, you can ask questions, and you can disclose personal information. Okay, why do I put a question mark there? We shall see. Okay, so highlighting what we have said. Now, highlighting what we have said, meaning that you need to be able to really listen to what the other party has said, okay? So that you guys can use whatever information that was given and then provide a feedback that was said earlier. For example, okay, you can say earlier, you seem interested when I told you about so and so and so. A moment ago, I heard you said. Okay, so this requires attention and focus whenever you are listening to the other person talking and you can use whatever they said and ask question or maybe you can reconfirm or you can clarify about certain matter. Okay, so it is one way for you to do that by highlighting what you or the other party have said. Okay, we can also repeat keywords or phrases to highlight what was said earlier. For example, Okay. I usually send in my report in the first day of the month. And then you can repeat, first day of the month, right? So this is also a good technique by repeating keywords or phrases. So it seems that you are actually uh, were paying attention and that you were interested to what the other party was saying. Another technique that you can use would be by asking questions. Now, there are two types of question. We have closed question and open-ended question. Now, closed question require yes or no answers or one to two word responses. Okay, for example, do you enjoy working here? So the answer would either be yes or no. There's nothing in between about that question, okay, in terms of the answers. Okay, when do you start working here? Who is your boss? So very direct question that would give very direct answers. And open-ended question, meanwhile, okay, begins with normally WH words. Okay, what, how, and why, okay? Um, for example, what are your job specification? How do you feel about this report? Why do you like working at UTHM? 
right? So these are among the questions that you can ask. But of course, whenever we are trying to ask a question, we must make sure that it is in the context of the conversation. And of course, it is relevant to the other party. Right. So the third stage would be closing a conversation. When we wish to close a conversation, okay, we do not stop talking suddenly. Okay, that's that's very rare. So we must close a conversation properly and we do not end them suddenly, okay, or, or what we can call as abruptly because we don't want to sound, we don't want to appear rude. Okay, in a lot of situations, uh, there are actually signals that will make sure that we can end our conversation naturally. For instance, okay, when a meeting begins or when your telephone rings. So that's actually is a sign whereby the conversation can end naturally. Okay, and we, we can actually end the conversation by saying like, oh, um, my meeting's about to start. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I need to take this call. So that is whereby you can close it because anything that's happening around you, okay, actually made it um, a point to close the conversation, okay, by natural means, okay. In such situation, we can end the conversation by saying, okay, it looks like the meeting is about to begin, or I apologize, but I need to take this call. So these are among the things that you can use when you want to end a conversation naturally, okay. And the next here will be the stages that you can do to close your conversation properly. Pre-closing, closing and taking leave. So in terms of pre-closing, okay, when we want to end a conversation, there is some signal words that you can use. And you can use these following expressions to signal you are actually in the stage of closing a conversation. You can say, well, so look at the time. I know you're busy. Okay, so these are all signal words. There are actually more, but these are some of the common ones that you can use to signal to the other party that, oh, we want to end the conversation. Okay, and the closing part will be after you actually have signal, uh, after you have used the signal words, you can actually explain further, okay, by saying the reason why you actually have to close or why you have to end the conversation. Okay, you can say things like, I'll let you get back to work now. I'm afraid I've got to leave now. It's getting late. I have to rush off now. I've enjoyed our discussion, but I have an appointment at 3 p.m. So these are among the expression that can be used to signal that you are indeed trying to close or end the conversation. Okay, and then the last stage would be taking leave. So after you have clearly or clarify uh, why you are ending the conversation, okay, the next step will be to take leave. So here are the expression that you can use. Very simple, as simple as saying goodbye. Okay, see you soon, see you later, see you when I see you, okay? See you some other time, have a good week, have a good weekend, okay? Some of us uh, also would greet uh, or say goodbye, for example, uh, giving, uh, you know, proper greeting. If you are Muslims, okay, you can say Assalamualaikum, okay? All right? That is one way for you to actually take leave. So this is actually the ultimate step whereby you know the conversation is ending. Right, so we are done with the conversation part. So I hope that you are aware of the stages of different parts of conversation. So we have opening, maintaining and closing. So that is the full cycle of our conversation. So next we're going to go into telephoning skills. Okay, whereby we're going to look into basic elements of telephoning, okay, its importance and some expression that you can use when you are handling a telephone call. Right, so I'm sure that all of us had experiences of actually handling a phone call, but how do you actually feel about handling a phone call and having to call and having to speak okay, into the phone in English? Some of us may not gain the same confidence as when we are trying to use our first language. 
So interacting uh, on the phone effectively, I would say is a skill, okay? Because we need to practice, okay? There's an element of practice that we need to have so that we can be more confident when we're, whenever we are handling the phone. And the effective use of a telephone can result in improved levels of personal contact and the development of relationship, both internally and externally, especially with your customers as well as clients. And in the context of this class, okay, students. Immediate response to issues which are important in maintaining good relation with our clients. So in this context, our students. We want to maintain the good relation that we have with our students. And good information flow within and around an organization. Okay, This is, of course, you, you want to avoid um, the errors of miscommunication. Okay. A reduction in time spent on writing letters, which will in turn reduce administrative costs. So that's why it's very important throughout handling telephone calls. Okay, uh, this will be one advantage because we can reduce time spent writing letters. Okay, and overall enhanced performance of an organization because okay, once we can handle ourselves well on the phone, it shows that we are competent. Okay, in an organization. All right, so in this section, we will look into the use of appropriate language expression in managing effective telephone interaction in relation to making phone calls, okay? We're going to focus on making telephone calls and expression use, yeah? Okay, so making telephone call. Making effective telephone calls is a process that requires some preparation, which include, of course, setting a specific time to make your phone calls, Okay, having a calendar and a pen at hand or maybe a memo, okay? Gathering all our information before making our calls, okay? Meaning that you need to check first, make sure that you have the correct phone number, okay? Uh, you need to know the name of the person you need to speak to, okay? Having some information at hand such as names, address, okay? anything relevant, okay? And below are some useful language expressions that we can use in making telephone calls. Of course, we need to identify who we are first. So these are some expressions that you can use to identify who you are. You can say, hello, this is Nurul from Giant Securities Berhad. Or you can say, hello, my name is Nurul. I'm calling for Giant Securities Berhad. Hi, it's Nurul from Giant Securities Berhad. This is, of course, in uh, if you have a formal informal setting okay hi Nurul here again you can need to look into the setting so normally if it's an informal setting you can be uh, less formal and can just start saying hi okay right next say who we want to speak to after we say hello okay what will be our intention of calling okay or maybe you need to speak to someone okay I like to speak to Mr. Nazri please or you can direct your call to a specific department. You can say, could I have the marketing department, please? Or you can say, can you put me through to Mr. Nazri, please? So these are specific, what we can call as language lingo, okay? Uh, telephone lingo, not language lingo. Telephone lingo that you can use, okay, whenever you are making a call. Could I have extension 8600, please? Could I speak to someone in the sales and purchase department, please? Or you can just simply ask, is Mr. Nazri there, please? Okay, so these are some of the expression that you can use whenever you want to be redirected or you want to speak to another person or you want to be redirected to another department. Okay, and next, of course, you can explain the intention or the purpose of your call. Right? These are some of the expression that you can use. The reason I'm calling is so and so. I need some information about so and so. It's in connection with so and so. I'd like to, okay, what will be the intention of your call? I'm ringing to the intention of your call. All right, besides using the standard language expressions in making telephone call, please note that 
Okay, the terms K or the word can, could, will, and would can be used to ask people to do things. Okay, so these are expression. Okay, it all depends on the context of your call. Okay, what would be the intention? What would be the reason of you calling? So you can uh, customize the expression to suit your situation. Okay, all right. For example, if you want to ask people to do things, okay, you can say or you can make requests such as, can you give him a message for me? Could you give him a message for me? Will you give him a message for me? Would you give him a message for me? Okay, they all actually technically means the same. Okay, you must make sure that the other person on the, on the other side of the call understood what you're trying to say. Okay, you can also use can, could, will, and would to ask for permission. Okay, can I leave a message? Could I leave a message? May I leave a message? So each of these actually have different, very small uh, differences in terms of meaning, okay? Can refers to possibility, okay? Could means would it be possible? May, you are normally asking for permission, which means do you give me permission to do so and so, okay? Then, uh, commonly or generally, they actually mean the same, but uh, if you have like, you know, small differences, that will be the small differences in the difference of can, could, will, and would. Right. So these are among the telephone terms that are used that you can also use whenever you are making a call. Line is engaged normally means line is busy. Whenever you say someone's on the phone, okay. On the phone here refers to someone is actually using the phone, okay, currently, right. Give you a ring, okay, it means call you. Return your call or returning your call means you have to call that person back. Someone is engaged, it means someone is busy. Pick up means to answer the phone. And the call was cut off, sudden termination in call. For example, okay, if the if there is a sudden termination of the call, you can simply say, oh, I got cut off. Oh, my call was cut off. Okay, simply put. Okay, so we have reached the end. I hope that you have learned, okay, what we can do whenever we are starting a telephone call. Okay, and early on, I hope that you are well aware of the different stages of having a conversation, the beginning, Okay, the maintenance as well as the closing. So thank you very much, everyone. Bye.